Hello and welcome to Sex Within Marriage Podcast. My name is JD and I blog over at uncoveringintimacy.com. And, uh, you know, there's an old quip about how men get married expecting their wives to stay the same and women get married expecting to be able to change their men and neither gets what they want. And it's funny because often there's an element of truth to this, which frustrates both spouses. Of course, it doesn't apply to every marriage, and sometimes the dynamic is reversed. But what's expected of every marriage is that something in the marriage will change eventually. It may be the wife, it may be the husband. Uh, It's likely that it will be both of you in some ways. It's also going to be your surroundings and your context. You'll get pets, you'll have kids, you'll move, you'll change jobs, change churches, experience illness or injury, suffer losses or experience being wins and whatever it is things will change and those changes require a recalibration of the marriage you know communication and a discussion about what it means what needs to change and what should stay the same so today we're going to talk about how to deal with the inevitable changes that come and how and when to talk about them so that you can keep your marriage calibrated rather than running on old habits and patterns that no longer suit your life And as I said, change is inevitable. We've been through quite a few changes in our marriage. Right off the bat, the marriage itself was a change. Uh, We both moved straight out of our parents' homes into marriage. We had no experience living with anyone other than our own immediate families. Uh, We'd never had roommates other than siblings, and even then, not for a few years for either of us. Uh, We were both oldest, and we had our own rooms by the time we got married. So moving in together was a huge change. Uh, It was the first time we had to pay rent, utilities, or anything else that wasn't 100% disposable income. Uh, We came from very similar backgrounds. We're both Dutch-Canadian, from the same church denomination, CRC, the Christian Reformed Church, but we were raised differently. Uh, Christina grew up with chores and doing baking and cooking and cleaning and more. I grew up with a mother who, to this day, will not let me wash clothes in her washing machine because she's afraid I'll break it. Uh, So Christina had to teach me how to do laundry. You know, I never had to wash dishes, clean a house, dust anything. And while some of you might be thinking, oh, lucky you, you're wrong. Uh, I grew up without many of the disciplines and skills that would have been helpful in a marriage. Uh, It's something that I'm trying to fix with my kids. Uh, They all know how to cook, clean, and do laundry. And they can all do that by the age of 10, whereas I didn't learn until after I was 20. Anyways, that was a massive change for both of us. Christina Christina went from a family where everyone knew how to clean up to having me, who was relatively useless when it came to household chores. On the other hand, I went from having everything done for me to being expected to have half the chores to do half of the chores without even understanding what they were, let alone how often to do them or how to do them. And if you think it's obvious in common sense, it's not, or at least not for me. So that caused some fights and some hurt feelings. And those weren't the only changes we went through. You know, I was in school full time when we got married and then Christina was working. Then we switched and I was working and she was in school. I was self-employed for years and then took a job and largely shut down my business. Later, I started this blog, podcasting and coaching as well. Uh, We had five kids in nine years, which comes with a lot of changes, some new, some repeating with each child. We moved across the country from the city and started a farm. And now Christina has about 200 pets across eight different species of animal. So lots of new things to learn there, as well as wells, tractors, barns, and all the stuff you see me post on my weekly updates. And now we have kids who are growing up, finishing high school, getting licenses, and one day, hopefully, we'll see them getting married themselves and starting the cycle all over again, hopefully better equipped than we were. In short, we've had a lot of changes. Some of them we handled well, and some we handled very poorly. Uh, Most of the changes that were handled poorly were earlier, while we're handling changes better these days. Uh, But things are constantly changing and evolving in our lives, and we can't keep using the old metrics, habits, expectations, and more that we used to. Uh, We need to take time to take a step back and recalibrate. And this is a habit that we try to instill off and on again during our marriage, and it's hard. Uh, We'll do, do well for a bit and then forget. And recently, we've been trying to pick it back up again with some areas that we're trying to work on. So you'd think it would be easier to remember because I often have my coaching clients engage in these recalibration behaviors as well uh, to take time to do this. And I generally suggest weekly meetings to help 
them make faster progress. Also, weekly is nice because it's consistent. It's also why I tend to prefer weekly coaching sessions. Uh, You can make a lot of changes quickly when you're working to achieve goals and then reporting and calibrating every week based on the outcome of those goals. And yet often I need to remember to do this myself. So this post is half a reminder to me to help me to keep going with it and half I hope that it will help you in your marriage. And so what does this weekly recalibration look like? And I think establishing some sort of formal framework often helps, especially when you're trying to institute something new. And yeah, it's going to feel awkward and weird and forced when you start, but it's less weird if you can simply point to something like this post and say, let's try this. So here's a basic outline for one of those recalibration type meetings, which I often call state of the marriage meetings with my clients. Uh, First things first, schedule the meeting. How often do you want to do this? I suggest scheduling it rather than simply going along with whenever things change because things are constantly changing and you'll forget because you're in the middle of the change. And how do you determine when the change is done and when is it that when is it ever that all the changes are done and you're not in the middle of yet another change? Our lives are constantly in flux, so rather than trying to pinpoint moments of stability in them, uh, we instead try to create times of stability when we can step back from it and take it all in. And like I said, I prefer weekly because it's easier to remember. Uh, For example, we're doing every Sunday night. Uh, It kicks off our week and it closes off the last one. Uh, It's easier to remember, uh, and I see that when my clients set time aside weekly to focus on their marriage, they improve faster than the other ones who just call whenever they've got time or they found time. Because in some ways, that's what our coaching calls are. It's time for them to step out of the craziness of life and think clearly and logically about that craziness. Uh, If you can do that once a week, and ideally at the same time every week, you'll find it a huge help. And if you're struggling to stick to it, Try booking coaching sessions. It is hard to make excuses for not doing it when it's on the calendar. You're paying to be there, and I'm going to ask you what happened if you don't show up. So yeah, step one, book it, put it on your calendar. I'd say make it weekly if you can. Uh, Step number two is to celebrate the wins. You know, Start the meeting off with going over what went well last week. What wins did you have? Uh, They can be big. They can be small. Even if you're in a rush, rough patch, you can probably find something. Uh, For example, I've had a coaching client say that they didn't threaten to leave this week. And that was a win for them because they had a habit of threatening divorce in every fight and fights happened multiple times a week. And that was a big win for them. For others, that would be considered just a regular week. And if this isn't your first meeting, like after you've had a couple, uh, this is a good time to also go over your goals for the last week and see which ones you actually made. Uh, And if you did, then celebrate those. And if you want more fuel to keep going, write them down so that you can look back and see everything that you have accomplished. In a year, you can look back and see what you used to consider like a hard one win, which is now just a typical week's expectation. And then you can see how far you've come. So start off with wins and then Go with what could have been better. You know, look back at the week and look for pain points. Uh, What could have been better? What could have been improved? What could have been avoided if you had had a plan for it? Uh, For example, in our in our family, we used to get annoyed because we'd say, "Oh, we're out of peanut butter," or whatever. uh, But no one would ever write it down, and someone would go shopping and not buy it because they just didn't think of it, they didn't remember, or they didn't know because they didn't get told that we were out of peanut butter. Somebody else knew that we were out of peanut butter. Eventually, we decided that maybe we should keep an ongoing shared grocery list. And as soon as somebody says, oh, we're out of X, someone will yell, put it on the list. So now we have one shared grocery list. We keep it in Google Keep because we all have Android phones. And the next time whoever's in town grocery shopping or has time to kill, uh, they pull out the list and see what they can check off. And that's a new habit that came out of a pain point that we decided to do something about rather than just sweep it on the rug and under the rug and continue on. And often we can find little tweaks that make things better, but we don't often think about them in the middle of the pain. Uh, sometimes it takes a sober look while looking back to go, Oh yeah, I guess we could have done X instead. And that would have been better. And then you make a plan to do that the next time it comes up or beforehand so that it doesn't come up again. 
And the point here is not to point fingers at who did what or who forgot to buy what or whatever, but rather to simply look at the pain points and then make a plan for how to improve the situation or mitigate it. Uh, Again, if you're struggling with a pain point and can't figure out a way around it, book a call. I love finding solutions to problems. And then you end it off with what is the goal for next week? You know, set some goals. I'd say no more than three generally. Uh, if it's your first week, maybe just set one and see how it goes. Uh, they shouldn't be things that you already do or will do anyways, but rather things that would make things better and might be challenging. These things will stretch you so that you feel like it's a win when you do it. So for some, going through the week without fighting might be a huge stretch. For others, that's a typical week and not worth writing down. I've had a couple who actually made fighting a goal because they tended to be too passive and ended up building resentment and frustration over time. So they wanted to start fighting about things that came up and while they were still small rather than waiting until they blew up after festering for a while. And whatever it is, set a goal or two to stretch you. Uh, If you have a lot on your plate already, just put one. Make it something attainable but something that you'll need to work at. And the point is to figure out something that would move the needle forward for your marriage, even if it's just a little bit. Small incremental changes over time can have a very large lasting effect. And also have grace for yourselves and each other. If you didn't achieve a goal, recognize that you missed it. Don't just let it slide. Then reevaluate the goal. Should you make the same one this week and try it again? Uh, If so, then what can you do to make it more attainable? What obstacles can you clear that are in the way? If not, then scrap the goal. Maybe it's something, maybe it's because something else has a higher priority. Maybe whatever the goal was died because you didn't do it. Uh, But just be kind to yourselves and each other. Don't beat yourselves up because you didn't make the goal. Just take responsibility, adjust, and then move forward. So if you want to move your marriage forward but don't know how to, try using this framework. Uh, In coaching, I've seen couples go from separated to happy just by using it. I've seen couples where one is ready to leave the marriage and then they turn it around. you know. And I've seen good couples go to become amazing couples with the same process. This works for anybody. And yes, there's more to these stories, there always is, but this was a core element of that change. And if you're struggling with your own progression, let me know. Uh, Even if your spouse doesn't want to participate, you can do your part until they're ready to join. I've had many coaching clients who start as one spouse and then later their spouse joins because they see the changes in them. Um, And yeah, let me know in the comments on the blog post. You can go there. It's at the bottom. Uh, Do you do these? Do you have weekly calibration meetings or monthly or whatever cadence you're using? Uh, What are your experiences? And... If you're not doing them, are you interested in giving this a try? And I help. I hope this helps you improve your marriage. Uh, that's it for today. We'll talk to you next time.